The G-Shock GA2100, nicknamed the Casio, was released in 2019 and it was sold out everywhere. You just couldn't get a hold of it. It was so popular. And I can understand why it has that durability and tough aesthetic that G-Shock is known for. And then it also has the 70s octagonal bezel and integrated band that's so popular with the AP Royal Oak. So it was always going to be a surefire winner. Now I had this watch for a few months and I've been wondering whether it's overrated. So I want to take you through the key specs, what I like about it, and then if you stay to the end, uh, what I don't like about it and whether or not I think it's overrated. So it has the Hallmark G-Shock features. So there's the, um, the resin outer and then it has the 200 meters of water resistance and it can do all the usual G-Shock things. It also has quality of life features like an analog uh, day indicator on the left-hand side of the dial. And then it also has a small inverted digital display that has the time, uh, including the seconds, world time, stopwatch, timer, and alarm. This watch has just been updated with a solar version as well that has Bluetooth connectivity and it uses the Bluetooth to sync the time throughout the day so you've always got an accurate time. I love the funky look of this watch and it comes in a huge variety of colors. I feel like it's the watch world equivalent of Nike slash Air Jordan sneakers. They're timeless but then they're a platform for endless creativity. As I mentioned earlier, the octagonal bezel is the standout feature of this watch. Some say it's a copy of the AP Royal Oak, while Casio maintained that it's an evolution of their classic DW5600E, the original G-Shock. And I tend to agree with Casio. Here's mine that I've had for over 10 years. I distinctly recall when I first got this watch, the similarity that it has with the Royal Oak. So if Casio drew any inspiration from the Royal Oak, I think it first happened back in the 80s when the G-Shock was first developed, rather than now. Honing in on the colours of my one, I love this mystic brown colour and it has a swirl of these different shades of brown and it adds some depth to the watch, just makes me want to look at it throughout the day. Uh, same goes for the accent colours, so you've got a flat grey dial and then the words G-Shock are in a bright orange on the twi- and then the 12, 3, 6 and 9 markers are also in that bright orange. The rest of the markers are in a purple, which I love, that combination of uh, purple and orange. So. An overall subdued colour scheme, but then throw in some subtle highlight pop colours. My advice for anyone looking at getting a Casio Oak is to go for one that has a contrasting colour with the dial. So the monochrome ones look good when there's perfect studio photography that highlights the design elements, but I think in regular light they don't have enough contrast to really highlight the octagonal bezel, and that goes with my brown one here too. Kinda wish I got one that had a brighter colour. Uh, not, not to mention that G-Shocks are one of the rare opportunities we have to wear a loud, colourful watch. Um, so I think better to go for something that's uh, a bit brighter. There's very little I don't like about this watch. I think there's a couple things I would highlight as they weren't readily apparent to me when I was first looking to get this watch. So the first one is the lack of an analog seconds hand. For me, G-Shocks are always about function and practicality. And if I think of the situations where I'm wearing this, it's either in the gym or maybe in the kitchen. And so if I'm timing sets or how long my steak's been on the grill, both those situations I like to have a seconds hand. I know there's a digital seconds, but they're in the tiny display that you can't really see. Uh, And that's if you don't have the analog hands in that position covering the digital display as well. The other thing I noticed is that the loom on the the hands is quite weak. Can't really see it when it gets dark. Uh, Fortunately, there's a built-in LED light which also shines on the hands. But for me, if you've got an analog watch, I think uh, loom is always essential. And finally, and this is really nitpicking for a 150 Australian dollar watch, this little black keeper on the band isn't quite uh, color matched. So that wraps up my thoughts on the Casio and brings me back to my original question about whether it's overrated. My thoughts are no, it's it's a great watch, and you know, being a great watch isn't about being perfect in either design or functionality. I think it's about how well it represents something uh, and this watch represents everything about G-Shock very well. I think it has the ruggedness, it has the design but importantly it has that intrigue that Casio watches have. If we think back to, at least for me, I got a Casio, it's my first watch when I was a kid and uh, this watch just brings me back to that feeling. So those are my thoughts on the Casio. Comment down below and let me know what you think. Thanks.